The most relaxing and luxurious outdoor lounge at sea is hiding in plain sight. It's not in the pricey first-class suite section of cruise lines like Norwegian or Celebrity. It's not even that expensive, with half-day passes going for as little as $20 or less. It's the sanctuary on Princess Cruises, which has fast become my favorite outdoor place to relax on any ship or cruise line. The space, the view, the comfortable loungers, the attention from the sanctuary attendants, and the food create a perfect space to de-stress while soaking up some sun. Not surprisingly, it's hard to get in and the booking process can be a very frustrating experience. Join me for a complete tour along with some tips on how to secure a spot on your next Princess Cruise. Hey cruisers, Andrew from Ottawa, Canada here. Welcome to the Chill Cruiser, where I review cruise ships from a chill perspective, sharing tips on how to save time, money, and grief on your cruise vacations. I'm coming to you from deck 18 of Enchanted Princess, right in front of one of the most chill venues you can find at sea, the Sanctuary. After trying it for the first time in November, I was instantly hooked. Princess is no shortage of relaxing pools and loungers on its ships, but what sets the Sanctuary apart is the space, the quiet, the service, and of course, the stunning view. I've never felt so relaxed or spoiled on a cruise ship, and I've been very lucky to be able to sail on 40 cruises on most of the North American cruise lines, including the first-class suite sections of Norwegian and Celebrity. Unfortunately, the sanctuary also seems to be Princess's worst kept secret, and it's very hard to get in. Princess only allows you to book while on board, and it was sold out for all 10 days of this cruise within minutes of the beginning of Embarkation Day, with a lineup that stretched down to the end of this deck. Apparently it's been like that for years and Princess has done nothing about it, which is unfortunate considering it's a premium product. In the next episode, I'm going to cover why it's so hard to get in and offer some suggestions on how Princess can improve the booking experience. Today I'll give you a full tour and also share some tips that will hopefully improve your chances of getting in on your next Princess cruise. The Sanctuary is available on most Princess ships and all Royal class ships except for Majestic. It takes up the entire forward section of deck 17 or 18 on Royal class ships and is mostly covered with a thick canopy that offers a sort of hybrid shade, letting you enjoy the sun without a lot of the heat or brightness. Sanctuaries on Sky, Enchanted, and Discovery include a hot tub. On Royal and Regal, the sanctuary is located right in front of the adult-only retreat pool, which features two hot tubs. In this video, I'll cover the experience on the newer ships. I didn't experience the sanctuary on a Grand Class ship, but based on a tour of the Caribbean Princess, it looks like they're not as spacious and not all loungers offer the same view. On Enchanted, which has capacity for 3,600 guests, there are only 24 loungers and 7 cabanas. You can book either for a full or half day. You also have the option to book loungers for the entire cruise. Loungers are $20 for a half day, $40 for a full day, and $300 for the entire 10-day cruise. Your fee includes the very comfortable lounger with a small table and access to the two lounge areas and hot tub. Sanctuary attendants come around regularly offering drink service. If you're lucky enough to be there in the afternoon, you get to experience afternoon tea service right at your lounger. In addition to a large variety of teas, you can choose from scones, desserts, as well as sandwiches. Cabanas are $140 for a half day and $220 for a full day, and include breakfast in the morning or lunch in the afternoon, along with a mini bar set up with alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks of your choice. You can substitute liquor for one bottle of wine. Both times I've experienced the sanctuary was in the afternoon, and both lunch and afternoon tea were delicious. Lunch featured a selection of bento boxes with options like grilled chicken salad, tuna salad, and shrimp. You can find the food and drink menus on my website. There are also two cabanas reserved for the spa, one for couples massages and the other a lounge for spa guests to relax before and after their treatment. I'll come back to these spaces in a moment because they were my ticket to scoring an afternoon in the sanctuary on this cruise. Both times the service was excellent, with attendants checking in regularly. On the sky, attendants went a step above and brought me a towel when I was approaching the hot tub and a cold towel while I was soaking. Since everything is so spaced out, the combination of personal space, peace and quiet with the comfort of the loungers brought me to a level of relaxation I hadn't experienced in a long time. I'm not kidding when I say you won't want to leave and you'll want to come back the next day, which is why it's such a shame that it's so hard to get in. Since the sanctuary is essentially always sold out, there are only a few ways to get in, mainly through cancellations or no-shows. Some ships are more generous than others when dealing with no-shows. On Sky, they said I could come if a reservation was a no-show early one afternoon on a port day, which did end up being the case. When I asked if I could do the same here on Enchanted in January, they said they wouldn't do that, so it seems each ship manages no-shows differently. Princess doesn't have a policy that releases a sanctuary reservation if you don't check in by a certain time, which explains why both times I was able to get in, the space was half empty. 
No shows are common because even though it's the most in-demand amenity on the ship, the sanctuary doesn't charge you if you cancel or don't show up. There are a few ways to significantly increase your chances of snagging a reservation. The first is by sailing back to back. You might not have a lot of choice on your first cruise, but you get first dibs on all the spots on the next cruise. Another way to have a bit of an advantage is if you're in a suite with access to the concierge, who can call in favors to help you snag a spot. If you're not in a suite, it's a good idea to put your name on the waiting list on the first day and just keep checking in at the front desk to check on availability. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. You'll definitely have to be flexible and are more likely to get a spot on a port day since sea days are when the sanctuary is in highest demand. Another trick that worked for me was arranging with the spa to book that lounge cabana I mentioned earlier. I noticed that both spa cabanas always seemed to be empty, so I asked the spa manager if there was any way to reserve them one morning. Since there weren't any more spa appointments in the sanctuary for the rest of the day, she was nice enough to release the lounge cabana and I was able to use it for the entire afternoon. The only difference compared to regular cabanas is that it's not located under the canopy, it's not quite as wide, and has one less chair. Otherwise, you get to enjoy the full cabana experience. There's no guarantee that they'll do this again, but it's definitely worth a shot if you're out of other options. Princess's policies and pricing for the sanctuary are overly generous in my opinion, and a big part of why they have to turn so many people away. Hit subscribe so you don't miss my next video, where I'll go over in more detail why it's so hard to get in, with some suggestions on how Princess can better manage demand. Some of the potential changes are bound to be controversial, but when you have to turn away most of the people lined up halfway down the deck on the first day of a cruise, there's clearly something wrong. The good news is that Princess offers another very chill-friendly venue called the Enclave, which is a fantastic thermal suite that's much easier to book and rarely sells out. Watch out for a future video where I'll share a full tour. In the meantime, if you're curious about what it's like to cruise on Princess, check out my video with 25 lessons based on six recent cruises here. Thank you for watching and happy cruising.